today when Zimbabwean innovator and inventor Maxo Chikumbuto paid a courtesy call showcasing his latest invention of the world's first soft powering vehicles and motorbikes that run just on radio waves. No fuel, nothing. Nothing, no fuel. First in the world. First in the world. They tried to kill him. In 2017, Maxwell Chikumbuzo was poisoned. His partner didn't survive. Why? Because of an invention so disruptive that it threatens oil empires, car makers, and the very idea of how we power our world. Born in poverty, fueled by obsession, Maxwell now claims to have built a machine that never runs out of energy. A car that drives forever. A generator that powers your home. Impossible? Maybe. Revolutionary? Definitely. Next month, Zimbabwe will show the world. This is the story of a man defying science and surviving to prove it. Early life and poisoning. Maxwell Chikumbuzo wasn't born into privilege. He grew up in Zimbabwe during a time of hardship surrounded by scarcity, yet driven by an unusual obsession, machines. While most kids his age were chasing footballs in the dust, Maxwell was scavenging scrap, rewiring radios, and trying to make broken gadgets spark to life. He never finished high school, but what he lacked in formal education, he made up for with restless curiosity. By his 20s, he had already built transmitters, navigation systems, even crude turbines that caught the eye of engineers far beyond his neighborhood. But genius is rarely a safe gift. When Maxwell's ideas began to attract global attention, the shadows crept in. He traveled between Zimbabwe and the United States, seeking partners to commercialize his inventions. Then came the moment that changed everything. He and his business partner were poisoned his partner didn't survive. Maxwell barely did. January 2017. He remembers it as the month he came face to face with death. Why would anyone want him gone? Maxwell suspects his breakthroughs threatened powerful industries, oil, automakers, and entrenched energy giants with everything to lose. Whatever the truth, the attack forced him into retreat. He returned to Zimbabwe, scarred but not broken. There, he would rebuild under the quiet support of his country's president, who urged him to keep developing his forbidden technology. Maxwell's survival gave him one conviction. If his inventions were worth killing for, then they were also worth fighting for. And from that fire came his most audacious creation yet, the microsonic energy device the microsonic device. At the heart of Maxwell's claims is something he calls the microsonic energy device. On the surface, it sounds impossible. A system that draws usable power from radio frequencies, those faint invisible ripples that saturate our world. Scientists measure these signals in nanovolts, levels so tiny they're considered meaningless. To most, they're background noise. To Maxwell, they were untapped fuel. He says he found a way to harness them back in 2009. By carefully designing 70% of the device's components himself, he claims he unlocked a method of capturing and converting radio waves into continuous energy. The concept borders on the mysterious, an energy source that requires no charging, no fuel, no solar panels or wind turbines just the ever-present hum of electromagnetic frequencies around us. If true, the implications are staggering. Maxwell describes the device as not just a car motor, but a generator. When installed inside a vehicle, it powers the car indefinitely. No charging station, no gas station, unlimited range. And when you drive home, you can literally plug your house into your car. According to him, it produces up to 15 kilowatts of power, enough to run an entire household. Skeptics point out that such a device defies established physics. Energy must come from somewhere, 
and radio waves are far too weak to power even a light bulb, let alone a car. But Maxwell insists he's tested, refined, and certified the device under global standards. ISO FCC C B C A S. For him, it's not about convincing the critics. It's about proving it on the road. This is why he installed the microsonic unit into real vehicles, not prototypes on paper, not lab-bound gadgets, full cars, a motorbike, machines that move, accelerate, and keep going without ever needing to stop for energy. To him, the device isn't just an invention. It's a rebellion against the idea that ordinary people must always depend on corporations, grids, or oil giants for power. And soon, the world will see it in motion. The cars, bike, and specs. Forget concept art or futuristic promises that never leave the lab. Maxwell's technology already sits beneath the hood of real machines. The most striking of them? A sleek sedan built in collaboration with Chinese automaker Kaiyi. The car, named the Kaiyi Safe, looks ordinary at first glance, but inside it hides the microsonic motor. The result, according to Maxwell, is nothing less than a revolution. Unlimited driving range, that's the claim. Drive from Harare to Cape Town and back without ever stopping for a charge or a drop of fuel. Unlike Tesla, there's no need for vast charging networks. Unlike gasoline cars, there's no dependency on imported oil. Just pure, self-sustaining motion. Performance isn't sacrificed either. Maxwell says the sedan can reach a top speed of 220 km per hour, fast enough to rival traditional combustion engines and electric sports cars alike. But it doesn't stop at cars. He's also installed the system in a racing motorbike, built for speed and endurance. These machines don't just move, they keep moving. And the car's role extends beyond transport. Park it in your driveway, plug in a cable, and it becomes a generator, feeding your household appliances, lights, and even heavy-duty systems with up to 15 kilowatts of power. In a nation like Zimbabwe, where blackouts and energy shortages are common, that's a promise bordering on the miraculous. To Maxwell, this isn't just about vehicles, it's about freedom. Freedom from fuel imports, freedom from failing grids, freedom from limits. If his claims hold, these cars won't just rewrite the auto industry, they'll rewrite the very meaning of energy itself. The February 10th launch in politics, February 10th, 2025. That's the date etched into Zimbabwe's calendar, the official unveiling of Maxwell's microsonic-powered vehicles. Not just another auto show, but a state-backed event presided over by the country's president himself. For a nation often portrayed through crisis and struggle, the symbolism is powerful. Zimbabwe wants the world to see, not poverty, but possibility. At a pre-unveiling at the State House, the president stood alongside Maxwell, calling the invention proof of what young African minds can achieve when given the chance. For him, it's more than a car. It's a national statement, a reminder that breakthroughs don't have to come from Silicon Valley or Europe. They can be born in Harare's backyards. Politics, of course, can't be separated from the story. Zimbabwe spends millions each year importing fuel. A fleet of cars that never needs gasoline could slash those costs overnight. It could also give the government a powerful narrative of self-reliance at a time when the economy strains under sanctions and international pressure. But politics cuts both ways. Maxwell has already hinted that powerful interests abroad, oil corporations, auto giants, may have tried to silence him once before. Launching such a disruptive technology under the spotlight of state power is both a shield and a target. The world's eyes will be on Zimbabwe, and not all of them will be friendly. 
Still, for a country often dismissed as struggling, February 10th promises a spectacle. The first public glimpse of machines that claim to run forever, powered not by fuel or lithium, but by the invisible waves that surround us all. Skepticism, tests, and global implications. Of course, this bold claim draws doubt. Scientists point out that radio frequencies carry too little energy to power even a flashlight, let alone a car cruising at 220 kilometers per hour. To them, Maxwell's invention sounds like perpetual motion, something the laws of physics simply don't allow. Many have dismissed it as impossible, but Maxwell insists otherwise. He says the technology has already been subjected to rigorous certifications, ISO standards, FCC clearances, CBCA approvals. For years, he and his team have tested the system, pushing it through performance trials and safety checks. He doesn't shy away from scrutiny. Instead, he welcomes it, insisting the cars will speak for themselves once they're on the road. If even a fraction of his claims proves real, the consequences are staggering. Oil demand could collapse. Charging networks, the backbone of Tesla's empire, might become irrelevant. Developing nations long trapped in cycles of fuel dependency could leapfrog into true energy independence. And households everywhere could one day be powered not by grids or batteries, but by their own vehicles. That potential explains the danger. Maxwell already survived poisoning. He lost a business partner in the process. If his invention threatens billion-dollar industries, the backlash could be fierce. Yet he continues, convinced that his mission is not just mechanical, but moral. Zimbabwe's launch will be the first major test. Cameras will roll. Engines will rev. If the cars keep moving without charging, the world will have no choice but to take notice. If they fail, Maxwell risks being remembered as another dreamer who defied science and lost. Either way, the world is watching. Maxwell Chikambutso's story is one of defiance, a high school dropout who built turbines from scrap, poisoned yet unbroken, now standing on the edge of a moment that could redefine energy itself. Whether genius or illusion, his invention forces us to ask, what if the rules we cling to aren't the whole truth? What if the future comes not from billion-dollar labs, but from a Zimbabwean workshop? On February 10th, the world will see. Until then, stay curious, because sometimes the most unlikely places hold the power to change everything.